Welcome to Streetwalk Die, where history is just a step away. As we wander through the town with a body cam, we'll unravel the rich past that lies beneath our feet. In each episode, we'll explore another chapter of our town's narrative, revealing the stories that shaped its identity. So hit the subscribe button and step back in time with me. St. Margaret's Church in Edgware, dating back to at least the 13th century, was used by the Knights Hospitaller during that period. Although the exact construction date and builder are unclear, the church retains its late medieval west tower, hinting at its historical origins. Some renovations were done in 1846 by architect Charles Barry. Nestled in the heart of Edgware, it continues to be a testament to the town's rich past, and the enduring legacy of its community throughout the centuries. <laughs> Brockley Hill in Edgware was a hub of pottery craftsmanship during the Roman era, where the kilns tirelessly fired up an array of earthen vessels. This bustling spot is thought by some to be the ancient settlement of Soloniasis, a Roman footprint nestled amidst the English. The railway hotel was built and designed in 1931 by the architect A.E. Sewell for Truman Hanbury Buxton Brewers and opened in 1932. The historic building closed in 2006 after not reaching health and safety standards. The name Edgware carries a neat slice of history from Saxon times. It's derived from Ecgi's Weir, a special pond where a Saxon guy named Ecgi and his community would gather to fish. This name, Ecgi's Weir, paints a picture of a simpler time with people living close to nature. As the town of Edgware grew and changed over the centuries, the name remained, keeping a bit of that Saxon root alive. So every time we mention Edgware, it's a small nod to Ecgi, his community, and their cherished fishing spot from long ago. During the medieval period, Edgware Road took its route from the ancient Watling Street, a notable Roman road. This road transitioned from a Roman travel route to a path used by pilgrims in medieval times. As pilgrims trekked along the path, they were actually walking on a piece of history, tracing the steps of ancient Romans before them. This blend of Roman and medieval history underlines the rich historical tapestry that Edgware Road embodies linking the past to the present through the enduring trail of Watling Street. In 1489, during the Tudor period, the spelling of Edgware shifted to Edgeware. This change reflected the evolving language and culture of the time, synonymous with the Tudor era's broader transformations. This new spelling, Edgeware, was documented in records showcasing a small yet intriguing part of Edgware's linguistic history amidst the rich and complex backdrop of Tudor England. Through this spelling evolution, a glimpse into the town's past and its connection to the wider changes happening in Tudor society is revealed. In the 18th century, James Bridges, first Duke of Shandos, became a notable figure in Edgware by developing Cannons Park and erecting a grand palace there around 1713. This palace, reflecting the opulent Baroque style, not only stood as a symbol of luxury and architectural elegance, but also became a social hub for the elite of the period. Through the Duke's vision, Cannons Park and its palace enriched Edgware's cultural and social scene leaving a lasting mark on the town's historical and architectural landscape. Edgware Station, located on the northern line of the London Underground, opened on the 18th of August 1924 as part of an extension from Golders Green. The station, designed by Stanley Heaps, features three platforms and serves as a terminus on the Northern Line, improving connectivity between Edgware and other parts of London. On February 4, 1735, 
the famous bad guy, Dick Turpin, and his gang caused trouble in Edgware. They weren't just stealing, but were very violent, which scared the people in town. This scary story from that cold day became a well-known part of Edgware's past. Even now, people remember Dick Turpin's bad actions when they talk about Edgware's history. In the 19th century, Edgware had a small market where cattle brought from different parts of England were sold. This market was a hub for local tradespeople, including butchers who prepared meat from the cattle, tailors who crafted clothing, colliers or charcoal sellers who provided fuel, and brewers who made ale. These trades reflected a self-sustained community with a variety of local businesses. The market not only facilitated commerce, but also acted as a social meeting point for the townspeople, making it a lively part of Edgware's local culture and economy during that period. In 1900, Jazz. Wright Limited, a manufacturing engineering firm, set up shop in Edgware. The firm played a significant role during World War I and II. In the First World War, they manufactured medals, honoring the bravery of soldiers. During World War II, they shifted gears and produced respirator filters, providing a crucial defense against chemical warfare. This firm's operations not only showcased Edgware's industrial capability, but also its meaningful contributions during critical times in national and global history. Through these wartime efforts, Jazz, Wright Limited left a lasting mark on Edgware's 20th century industrial legacy. In the early 1930s, Edgware changed from a countryside area to a town area. This change brought new roads, buildings and better transport links, making it easier to travel to and from Edgware. Now, instead of mostly farms, there were more shops and businesses. This shift made Edgware a busier place with more people coming to live and work there, blending old country vibes with a new town look. Edgware holds a rich legacy of nurturing stars who've made remarkable strides in music, acting and politics. Anthony Costa, a member of the famed boy band Blue, is one of Edgware's musical gems. The acting realm shines bright too with talents like Jane March, known for The Lover, and Archie Punjabi of The Good Wife fame, both born in Edgware. The political arena boasts of John Burko, former Speaker of the House of Commons, an Edgware native. The cinematic world cherishes John Hardwick, born in Edgware, known for his vintage classics. Not to be overshadowed, George Michael, before becoming a global music icon, had his family roots in Stanmore in Edgware, where he honed his musical skills in local venues. The music legacy is further enriched by jazz maestro Victor Feldman, composer Gordon Langford, and events producer Harvey Goldsmith, all having ties to Edgware. The ambitious Edgware Town Centre redevelopment project, although not having a publicly disclosed start date, has been making waves since its announcement in September 2022. The initiative, set into a more concrete vision by Ballymore in March 2023, lays out a vibrant roadmap for Edgware's transformation over the next decade, with a generous investment of £1.7 billion to fuel the journey. Part of this redevelopment is a robust housing plan aimed at introducing up to 4,000 new homes, addressing a wide spectrum of housing needs and injecting a fresh pulse of community life into Edgware's core.
The economic flourish is another cornerstone of this project. With a projection to funnel £80 million into the local economy, it's poised to create over 1,400 full-time jobs, nurturing a thriving employment landscape in the area. On the commercial front, an expansive realm of over 500,000 square feet of retail and commercial space is set to unfurl. This initiative will herald new facilities like a cinema, gym and library, enriching the lifestyle quotient of Edgware. Engaging the community sits at the heart of this redevelopment, envisioning Edgware as a lively hub, brimming with spots for shopping, dining and socialising, creating a vibrant social canvas. The architectural charm is the cherry on top of this grand plan. Showcasing up to 29 storey towers designed by Glen Howells Architects, it's all about blending sleek design with functionality, painting a visually captivating and user-friendly urban scene. This redevelopment isn't merely a physical facelift, but a wholesome revitalization, turning Edgware into a more appealing, lively and economically thriving nook. joining me on this exploratory journey through Edgeworth. I hope you had as much fun watching as I had strolling through the streets of this historic town. Now I'm all ears for your suggestions on where to head next in England. Drop a comment below on which place you think I should explore in the upcoming episodes. Your input is the compass that guides this adventure, and I'm super excited to see where it leads us next. Don't forget to hit that like button if you enjoyed the video and subscribe to Streetwalk Live for more Wanderlust-filled episodes. Until our next adventure, take care and keep exploring. <laughs>